that it may please thee to grant in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed thick leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
psalm appointed for today is Psalm 32. We will read responsively by whole verse, beginning with the refrain. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but the mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle today is a reading from Romans. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift, following many trespasses, brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to the condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to the justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal Lord of love, behold your church. Mm -hmm. by night your fire, moved by your love. Your presence bear far off yet here the goal of all desire. The Holy 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to After Jesus was baptized, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you're the Son of God, command those stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Dying to the way of self, so daily living to your way of love. We, we walk the road, Lord Jesus, that you trod. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So he was a salesman, this fella. And he was about to make the greatest sales pitch of his entire life. He entered the client's office with an air of confidence. Through preparation, spectacular pricing, and urgent need, the administrative assistant was cordial but professional. He entered the spacious corner office, nervous, optimistic. The buyer was making notes on a file. And the administrative assistant rapped lightly on the door, stepped around the large desk, and whispered to the buyer, I apologize, but I have something, you have to take care of something. I'll be just a minute. Would you mind waiting? Now alone in the elegant office, he took a closer look at the furnishings, floor-to-ceiling windows, a magnificent view, ornate mahogany bookcases, photos in silver frames, a real fountain pen on a leather blotter, and a proposal. Mm. At the top, the logo of his biggest business rival. There it was, his whole pitch, but the bottom line was covered by a can, some kind of an energy drink. If he moved the can, he'd know just what his competitor bid and what harm could there be. Just reading the top page, after all, it's there in plain sight, right? Should I look or not? He finally decided to uncover the critical numbers. He lifted the can, and there wasn't any liquid in the can. In fact, it didn't even have a bottom. And it was filled with tiny, metal, noisy BBs that rolled out in every single direction, scattering across the floor, clattering on the hardwood. Busted. <laughs> you see, no matter how good the devil makes things look, there is always a downside. And you won't see it often until it's too late. Like there was this group of hikers, and... They were hot and thirsty, and they saw it in a, this watermelon farm, and they decided that there, were, they noticed there weren't any watermelons there except for one, only one left. Everything else was gone, and 
They knew that they shouldn't take it because they could see that the field was surrounded by barbed wire and they were hungry and thirsty and they snuck in. They reached their prize and they saw the farmer aiming a shotgun and he fired and they heard salt stinging their skin and their backsides as they were running away. One guy picked the melon up like a football and started running ahead of the others and when they cut it open the red and juicy and flavorful fruit was just awful. See, just because a temptation looks good doesn't mean it really is. The devil is crafty and he's devious and he promises us wonderful things but he's a liar. And his way is a way of agony and torment, never a shortcut to joy. You see, we all have perfect hindsight. We reflect on our past and we know exactly where we slipped. We know exactly how it hurt us and how it hurt the people we loved. Resisting temptation, now that's the real challenge, isn't it? How do we fight back against such a devious devil? Well, I heard about a guy who learned about fighting temptation from his dog. Yes, he'd put a biscuit on the floor and say to the dog, don't eat that. And the dog would run over, eat it, and then get punished. And he did it over and over and over. And after a while, the dog finally got the message. Eat the biscuit, I'm going to get punished. Then he noticed the dog didn't even look at the treat. He kept his eyes on the master. If we keep our eyes on the master, it's hard to see the temptation, isn't it? See, if the dog knew that if he even looked at the biscuit, the temptation would be too great. So he looked only into his master's face, never took his eyes off of him, and was never tempted again. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, if we build our lives on him and his holy word, then there is hope for us, real hope, not false hope, but real hope. I mean, Jesus himself relied on God's holy word when he came face to face with Satan, didn't he? When the devil tempted Jesus by taking God's word out of context, Jesus answered him directly from Holy Scripture. When the devil said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. And Jesus said, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's right out of the book of Deuteronomy. It says in that book, God humbled you by letting you hunger and then feeding you with manna in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Talking to the Israelites in the desert. This manna, this food that came directly from God was given to the people of Israel to make a point. We cannot live by bread alone. We need God. And when the devil said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, you, he will command his angels concerning you on their hands and they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus rebuked him saying, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Ooh. How often have we seen that happen? And those words are taken directly from Deuteronomy. When they were still moving toward the promised land. Do not follow other gods because the Lord your God who is present with you is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you and he would destroy you from the, from the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. I remember um, at the beginning of the pandemic how many people would say to me, well, God will protect me. I don't need to be vaccinated or wear a mask. And I would say to them, have you read Deuteronomy? <laughs> Do not put the Lord your God to the test. <laughs> Finally, when the devil offered, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, away with you, Satan. For it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. You're not on the table. You're not to be considered worthy of worship. Directly from Deuteronomy, the passage that he's quoting, the Lord your God, you shall fear him, you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. You see, our Bible is a powerful 
book. It is powerful. It contains everything that we need for salvation, for eternal life. Everything we need is contained in the words of the Bible. And in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he told them how to resist temptation. This is what he said. He said, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. Put on the belt of truth. Wear it. Tell the truth. Be truthful. The breastplate of righteousness. Not your own righteousness, but take on the righteousness of Jesus Christ and step out in righteousness, not because of anything you're doing, but because of what he did and does. He says, put on the shoes of peace. Don't walk in anger. Don't run away from problems. Step forward boldly in peace. The shield of faith. Your faith will protect you. Your faith is what makes it possible to step into hard times and difficult situations boldly. The helmet of salvation. I think it's interesting he wants us to protect our minds. Our minds. Protect our minds with the understanding that our salvation is done. We don't have to think about the other possibilities. The helmet of our salvation tells us our minds are just fine. And lastly, he says, the sword of truth. Now the armor of God, if you listen carefully, the belt, the breastplate, the shoes, the shield, and the helmet are all defensive tools. They're all for protection. You use none of those to attack another person. It's all to protect yourselves. The one piece of the armor that can be used to strike back is the sword of truth. And the sword of truth is God's holy word. Just as Jesus defended his position against Satan by reading directly to Satan God's holy word, we have God's holy word for our own purposes, for our own use, to protect us. Of all the resources that we have to resist temptation, only one can perform, I like, this is not really a word, temptation ectomies. <laughs> a temptation ectomy. So you just cut it out. And the word of God is powerful and it is just and it is righteous. We are not. We are sinners. As we reminded ourselves very clearly in the great litany, and we prayed those prayers together, we beseech you, good Lord, to save us from these things that we say and do and are. And in spite of it, we're entrusted with God's holy word to be used, not for our purposes, but for God's purposes. As we're beginning our Lenten journey together, let us all sharpen our swords, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's holy word so that you too, like Jesus, can defeat temptation. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. You may be seated. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, Oh, my soul, what wondrous love is this, oh, my soul, what wondrous love is this. For my soul, for my soul, who lay aside his crown for my soul. I will sing to Lord and I will sing to God and to the Lamb the great I am while millions join the theme I will sing I will sing while millions join the theme I will sing and when from death free I'll sing on I'll sing on and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity I'll sing on. Please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Pray Him above ye heavenly hope. 
praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Um. All things come from of thee, O Lord, to find own have we given. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer D, and this morning I would like to offer our Eucharist uh, for the repose of the soul of Eileen Braithwaite, who is a Quinta Toppin's aunt who died in Barbados this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you, to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Oh, holy, oh, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel if you're able. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill the purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
had supper with them, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please kneel for your post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Do we have any visitors this week? If you're a visitor, would you raise your hand and let us know you're here? Okay. Bring some visitors next week. <laughs> um, I was really pleased that we had a, a, a lovely Ash Wednesday service. We actually had more people on Ash Wednesday than we did on Sunday. <laughs> so that meant that, and there was a lot of people that, some of you weren't here, so figure all of you who weren't here, somebody brought a guest. So that's how we filled it in. So do bring guests, especially this time of year. A lot of people are searching and looking for something and it's a good time to do it. Um, immediately following the service, join us for coffee hour. We'll have coffee and other things, of course. We always do. The Healing Eucharist continues uh, Thursday mornings at 10, followed by our uh, Thursday morning study in the book of Acts. I was pleased to see that a number of you decided that their Lenten discipline would be to attend the Bible study. And so our numbers were significant. God blesses you. He will bless you for that when you show up for, to hear his holy word. You heard how Jesus def defeated Satan in the desert with scripture, with the word. Now you can't go against him if you don't know the word yourself. So it's really good to delve into it, learn what it means, and how it can apply to your lives. Um, there's another thing coming up. This, this in the season of Lent. Um, and that is, how do we pray during Lent? Do we pray daily? How do we pray when we do that? Well, we have a new tool available to you. You'll see this graphic on the, on the screen. There's a graphic that looks exactly like that on our website. And when you see that, you click on it, and it will open up a list of daily devotionals for the entire season of Lent. So you don't need to print it out. It's about 30 pages, so it's too much to print. But it's on your screen, and you simply scroll down to the day's date, and you can read a short, brief passage of Scripture and a reflection on that passage. It's produced by Episcopal Relief and Development. Those are the folks that provide money and funds for people who are in desperate need after uh, hurricanes and other disasters. Um, they also are the ones who do the United Thank Offering, you know, the little collection that we take. And that, so that's part of what they do. So um, they're a fine Episcopal organization, and the, uh, the reflections are well thought out and, and important. Um, the dinner dance is continuing to move forward, and so those of you who are interested, please um, sell your raffle tickets, get some sponsors. We're continuing to move forward with that. Um, what's that? Journals, yes, journal ads. We need journal ads, so do request some journal ads. Um, do we have any birthdays this week? Yes. We do. Okay. Your son's birthday? Mine. Your birthday. Congratulations. And your daughter. Okay. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Yes, Paula.
Okay. Good. Yeah, I think I think the flower world. I wish I could go. I I I find that fascinating work, how to take stuff off of a tree and make it look like magic. And so you guys do a great job. Um, do we have any wedding anniversaries this week? No, no. How about travelers? Got any travelers this week? Anybody going somewhere? Okay. Uh oh, you are. You're going. Where are you going? Southern Caribbean. Yes. You'll be cruising. Yes. Nice time of year to cruise. Okay. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care and protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have a safe trip. Thank you. See you when we get back. Before we do the procession of the world, I want to talk to you about one other thing. Uh, I spent the last couple of days at the Canterbury Retreat and Conference Center. Uh, they held a, um, a Lenten workshop retreat uh, studying the disciplines that we need for a season of Lent. And one of the subjects that came up um, is the daily office. Now, the daily office is in our prayer book in the back. And in, in the front, there's, there's readings for it. And it is a series of offices that comes out of the monastic rites, the monasteries where the monks would pray. So they're ancient rites. They've been around for many, many years. The Episcopal Church has a version of those rites in the form of morning prayer and evening prayer. Um, and I discovered that uh, I, when you're in seminary as a student, you have to do it every day. The whole community would come to the chapel and you would read morning prayer together and then you would do noonday prayer together and then you would do evening prayer together and you would do Compline late at night. So that was just the rhythm of the church to pray daily, pray regularly. When I got into the parish, that community didn't exist and so I missed it. I longed for it. Um, a few years later, after I'd been there, we got to a point where we had several folks in the parish who were uh, working toward becoming ordained in the church. We had four seminarian candidates aspirants for the priesthood. And so I said, okay, we're all going to gather in the morning. We'll do morning prayer as our own little private community and started doing that. And it kept going and kept going. Then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, we couldn't meet any longer. Uh, and particularly the daughters of the king were really frustrated because they couldn't get together and pray, which is what they do. Um, so we did something different. We, we decided, there's a thing called um, freeconferencecall.com that we subscribe to where we have a telephone number where you can dial in and have a conference call. We started doing morning prayer every day, Monday through Friday, on a conference call. So the congregation, even though they were locked up at home and couldn't go outside, could dial in and still participate with others for morning prayer each day. A morning prayer is not a long service. It's less than 30 minutes long. Um, but by doing it on phone, we found that a lot of people were able to do it. Our, our snowbirds who would go up north would call in. So they still were connected to it. There were people in other churches that missed that community and they would participate. So we had a lot of people that would turn in and do that. It's really simple. You dial a phone number and you listen, and you have the responses. The service itself is on our, will be on our website where you can look at it and go back and forth. Um, my question is, is that something you guys might be interested in? Yes or no? Yay? Yes? Okay, cool. Uh, the, the next question is, is, how early do you want to start? <laughs> Uh, some folks, uh, you know, in, in one church where I served, they, they was, the church was um, um, a lot of working folks, and so they had to be at work at 9, so they preferred to do it at 8 o'clock. Uh, I have others who say, uh, that's too late, I want to do it at 7. Others say, how does 10 o'clock sound? Um, so I'm thinking that probably for your community, maybe 9 o'clock would be a good time. Does that sound reasonable? Yay, nay? Earlier or later? Yeah, nine. Here's what we'll do. I'm going to put it up, and we'll, we'll, you'll get an email through the constant contact this week. It'll also be up on the website with the phone number uh, so that you can see how to participate. I'll explain it all to you. My goal is to start on March 1st, which is a Wednesday. So 9 o'clock on Wednesday morning, we'll begin uh, doing morning prayer over the phone. 
And uh, actually, with you guys at sea, you could actually you know, use the satellite phone and <laughs> listen in. Probably only cost you 400 bucks. But, <laughs> but we do have that option. So I'm, I'm looking for ways that we can continue to expand our life in prayer in the community and to stay connected in, in other ways. Okay? Any other announcements, thoughts? Let's sing our way out. Please stand. All hail the power of Jesus, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Crown him, ye martyrs of our God, who from his altar call. Praise him whose way of pain ye trod and crown him. Lord of all, praise him whose way of pain he trod, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him, the heir of David's line, whom David, Lord, did call. The God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. The God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. Ye heirs of Israel, chosen race, Satan's and of the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.